Welcome back. It's the Plus Politics, and we are moving to the other issue of the day. The Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has written to President Muhammad Buhari, refuting claims that he is corrupt and has embezzled public funds. His letter was written in response to a demand by a group, Kanuri Collective Agenda, calling on the President to sack the AGF over allegations of corruption and insubordination leveled against the former acting chairman of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The AGF said it, it was compelled to write to the presidency in order to clear his name in the wake of what appeared as a campaign of defamation by his critics to tarnish his reputation. Joining us to throw more light on this is uh, Ezenwa Nwagu, a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Ezenwa Nwagu. Thank you. Good evening. It's nice being with you this evening. And it's, 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 it's fun and it's, it's great to see you again. And we also have uh, Mr. Bolanle Olubani, a legal practitioner, joining us in this conversation. Good evening, Mr. Olubani. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah, let me start by, 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 by law of first mention. Now, let me start with Mr. Ezenwa. Uh, a lot of people will say, um, why are you worried? Why do you have to write that letter? But he has explained why he wrote the letter. But do you subscribe to Mr. Malami trying to clear his name? Well, I, I think that we, we need to take him by his own, um, by his own antecedents in, in the way and manner in which he has engaged uh, issues of uh, uh, allegation against corruption, uh, against uh, a minister a, 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 a department that he oversees, which is the uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Uh, I'm not sure he, he gave uh, Magu the opportunity to do a letter to explain himself. What mm -hmm. happened was that a panel was set up, and that panel is in the business of uh, investigating and trying to dig out whether Magu uh, was culpable or not. So uh, to, for him to use a different stroke for himself, is what, what needs to happen is that many um, plethora of uh, application continued to evaporate and then any right thinking person will expect him to, uh, will expect the president to set up the same kind of process that was set up to, to clear or to uh, get Magu in. So I, I, I don't think that that letter is important. I, I think that even the worst of the Andovers in many cases do not plead guilty. They, they plead innocence. And then at the end of the day, sometimes we find out that they, either, they actually committed the crime uh, they, they are being accused of. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that this is the right thing to do. Um, his explanation will fall short of uh, what is expected of a public official. If there are issues around you, you step aside and allow an independent, um, independent eye to look at the okay. issues and see what, what's uh, Let me go back to Mr. Olu, Olu Bani. Um, some would say that when you, people make allegations and you keep mute, you might as well say that your silence is consent. It, it, could that be the reason why he had to quickly come out before these allegations and all these defamatory comments get piled up against him? Well, Mr. Malami is a lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a member of the inner bar of the legal profession, and the number one law officer of this country. So I would assume that he is well grounded in the fundamental principles of natural justice, which guide the rule of law and due process. So if he's accused of any offense, any criminal offense, including embezzlement or corruption, the fundamental principles of law that apply to him are that no man should be a judge in his own court. It's a Latin maxim called Nemo Judex in Corsa Sua. The other maxim is all the Ateran pattern, the principle of fair hearing. If there is a particular or specific allegation of corruption against him, immediately a panel should be set up 
or the investigation should be done by the Inspector General of Police and a report made to the President. After which, Mr. Malami will be given the opportunity to defend himself in writing. He cannot respond to an allegation or a petition to the President if the President has not asked him to respond to the petition sent to the President. So I believe that his letter to the President is based on the petition which the President has asked him to react to. And as such, so that things will be seen to be done fairly in the eyes of the ordinary man on the street. If it were in other countries where there is a culture of accountability, Mr. Malami ought to resign from office to allow a proper, free and fair and unfettered investigation into the allegations. Or mm -hmm. at the worst case scenario, he should step aside so that he will not be seen to have interfered with the proper and just investigation of the issues or allegations against him. So that is the way to go. Is Any it? other thing is a charade. Uh, it's a cover-up and an attempt to get ahead of the problem before it snowballs to something he cannot control. Now, 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 uh, <laughs> Ms. Eyes have been fired. But let me stay with you before I go back to Ms. Wago. Uh, you just uh, mentioned quite a lot of issues, and some would remind us that uh, this is the man who probably is behind the ordeal that Magu is going through. And as we speak, Magu was made to be suspended. But don't you think this is more of a personal vendetta that is being sponsored by some people and giving in to resigning or being or 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 or, 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 suspect, or being suspended or being taken off from position is like um, giving in to the tactics of the accused. Well, aside from this petition, which the ethnically colored group has written against the attorney general, they are all over the social media videos and allegations of corruption, massive corruption against him already, which ought to have been investigated by any right-thinking government. And the issue of corruption should not be trivialized on the basis of tribalism or some form of partisan or prejudice approach or perception to it. It is pathetic that Magu has gone through what he's going through. Whether he was given fair hearing or not is another issue. Whether his removal by his appointer was done properly or not is another issue. But it would have been better if the petitioners against Malami were not canoeing like Magu. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Mr. Wagu, I'd like to get your perception on this because I'm a bit worried that um, each time a public officer is in charge of a thing, we hear this maxim that corruption will fight back. So shouldn't we also exercise caution? Because as we speak, Magu is yet to be, you know, uh, uh, is yet to be confirmed that he was actually corrupt. So why do we need to get distracted by facing another officer? We are not distracted. Um, Kay, this, um, the, the, I am the convener of Say No Campaign, uh, Nigeria. We had last year written a petition to the president. And uh, our petition was hinged on the fact that we knew that the Abacha loot, the recovery of the Abacha loot, that the lawyers that had engaged in that um, uh, um, legal activity had been paid off and Magu, um, Malami resurrected a new set of lawyers and <clears throat> excuse me, and paid them off. And we petitioned the president and what then happened was that instead of responding to us, I got an invitation from the Department of uh, Security Services and I told them that I was not going to that I didn't write any petition to them, that I wrote the petition to the president. And currently, beyond the one you are talking about, that is ethnically uh, based and all of that, 
myself, Olani Wajus Raj of the uh, coalition, uh, the, of uh, HEDA, and the additional uh, of Kakol, we wrote, we wrote a petition that has been widely circulated. So you are not talking of faceless people. You are not talking about um, people who have no identity. What is important is that the tragedy of the kind of political leadership we have in our country is that there is complete absence, absence of shame. People no longer have shame. If you do have shame, if there's an accusation, if you think you are innocent, what to do is to excuse yourself and say, look, I am innocent because of, because of the barrage of accusations that keep recurring. I need to step aside for a proper investigation to be conducted. To politicize it, to give it uh, whether corruption is fighting back, to hire people to write as uh, to those who have been compromised, who want to get at you. That's not the point. The point is that every point of the allegations are very clear. And to respond to it is not to be writing letters. Sahara reporters have done a, a great work of showing everything in terms of what, what Mr. Malami today possesses. If he says he's this thing, then he's, he's a code of conduct. Um, uh, he's, uh, he's, he should make, his, make public his public declaration of assets when he got into, when he got into office. And then we know where he is currently. He, he, the first way to do that is to publish that declaration of asset. And then you can start from there. But like um, Mr. Lugwani just said, it's critical for the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to do what is needful, to lead by force of personal example. He continues to swing under the allegation that his anti-corruption war is selective. And the reason why his traducers continue to bring that up is because the people close to him, and Mr. Malami continues to exploit that famed closeness to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that famed closeness is what is using now in terms of writing letters, in terms of sponsoring media articles and all of that. The point is that what he needs to do at this time is to simply step aside and okay. allow a Justice Salami or another Justice somebody to then look at the gamut of all the allegations that have been put around him and see whether he's okay. culpable uh, or uh, innocent. Uh, 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 these are serious issues. I'm sure probably Mr. Malami would have to make another clarification like the one he just did. Uh, uh, if we still have a look, Bani, on the line, uh, Mr. Nwagu has just raised something very critical to this conversation, and that has to do with asset declaration. We saw that trending video of his massive building. We saw his family, and he has explained that he was rich or he has been rich before he be got into government. So how do we really, you know, separate who you were before you get into government and being bandied as a corrupt person? Hello, I didn't get that question. Okay, I, I'm looking at the issue of asset declaration by public officers. According to Malami, he has always had good money. He has always, had, he has always been rich. And people are now touting the video of his house with his family, with his children. So how do we draw this line? If I have been rich before, do I need to get, you know, poorer by the time I get into government? Like this, like the, like the earlier speaker gave a cue. Uh, it's not very difficult. It's not rocket science to be able to ascertain one source of wealth and whether one has been corrupt or has done anything illegal. He was a successful lawyer. He rose to the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria. The money he earns, there is an account for it. Income and expenditure, profit and loss. If he acquired property before becoming attorney general of the federation, it is unlikely that it was that office that enriched him to buy those properties. It's very, very simple. He has bank accounts, he has BVN number. Those accounts should be traced to see whether there's any massive inflow of money into those accounts to, 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 to suspect or suggest that he has done or gotten money illegally. So, this has just some of the cues. If he's taking money through proxy companies or proxy individuals, you should also, the, the enforcement agencies should also probe accounts that are transferring huge amounts of money into his own personal account. 
So if somebody received on his behalf, and through that person, his money is being sent to his own account, it should be easily traceable. And questions can be asked as to why and what that money is meant for. So it's not difficult. But is there a political will to do the needful, to rid our society of corruption, to fight corruption, and not just resort to sloganeering and uh, making the issue of corruption something that is totally pedestrian? There's no serious approach to it. The culture or political culture of resignation is not with the Nigerian politicians. The culture of recusing yourself or excusing yourself in a matter of grave criminal allegation is not with us. Okay. Let me, let me quickly get this uh, as a way of rounding off from both of you. Uh, uh, my worry now is... Um, it appears, looking at the trajectory of EFCC chairmen over the years, and we discover that they, are hardly, they hardly leave that office without some kind of allegation or some kind of controversy. My worry now is, how do we build a system that throw up sincere men, either as AGF or EFCC chairman, or even as governor, even as uh, president? Plus, please, I, I, I'm really, really worried. Probably in the next one, one minute. Let me start with Mr. Nwago. Well, I, I think that it, it doesn't have to be about uh, sincerity. It has to be about a process. The, the process of becoming has to be uh, such that people will have to apply. And when they apply, they, they write a written test. And when they write a written test, that test and its results can be made public, and then the public can say, this man that uh, you are going to appoint, there are issues around him and all of that. But once you leave this to the discretion of an individual, um, it, it becomes you know, open to, uh, to be corrupted. So for me, it's about the process. Even sincere people, when the process allows them to uh, to, to play in the manner in which we have seen most public officials do, um, is, their sincerity will not be enough. We need to have a more um, merit-based equal opportunity process that throws up people who lead sensitive government institutions, especially anti-corruption okay. agencies like the one uh, that we're talking about. Thank you so much, sir. But more importantly, yeah, uh -huh. more importantly, is to also have a system that immediately people have issues. We don't need to delay. The president must, through force of personal example, show that he truly means this anti-corruption fight. And one of the ways to do that is to scapegoat people who have pretended to be very close to him. And under that, guys have perpetrated all kinds of infractions. Okay. And, and nothing seems to happen. And if our sanction regime is as weak as it continues to be, then there is, there is no hope. Okay, thank you so much. Our, our time is really fast spent. Mr. Lugbani, I have to be a bit unfair to you. Can you help me make your final thought in the next 20 seconds? Yes, my, my final position on the, in, on the ignominious way that EFCC chairmen are removed is that there should be a constitutional amendment as to the way and manner the EFCC chairman should be appointed and removed. If it's nominated by the president and ratified by the Senate, before it's that is the confirmation of his appointment is done by the Senate, his removal too should be with confirmation by the Senate. The law, okay. the Electoral Act, the Constitution should be amended to reflect that. Thank you so much. Secondly, there's an EFCC board which is not, in not, which is not functioning. They should let that EFCC board have people appointed to it to oversee the affairs of the chief executive, which is the EFCC chairman. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bolanlo Lubani, a legal practitioner, and Mr. Uh, Ezenwa Nwagu for your time. Thank you for your insight. We sincerely hope that one day, not quite long from now, we'll be proud of all our public officers. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to our viewers, uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere.
Here is my take, especially as it relates to the letter written by former President Olu Shegun of Basanjo. However sensitive the issue is, it is incumbent that our deeds will outlive us, either good or bad. Whether it is a taboo to speak evil about the dead, it is expedient that for those using the dead to score political points or settling scores, posterity is there to judge. And that is my take for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow evening, same time. You can catch a repeat of today's broadcast by 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon on the same station. Stay safe and have a good evening. Good evening. I'm Coyote Ladende.